Hi, everyone. This is Simon Sweep with Network in Action. And today I am talking to Sarah Caruso. Uh, she's a financial advisor with Prudential. And we're talking about the Colorado Secured Savings Program. Uh, it's a new program that um, is coming down the pipe. A lot of business owners have heard about it at this point and have questions about it. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about what is it, what does it mean for small business owners, what are some of the impacts that it will have on their business and themselves, um, when does it go into effect, and why should small business owner talk to Sarah about it and how you can help them um, navigate whatever is going to come their way. Perfect. So, um, yeah, hi, Sarah. I'm, I'm super happy to talk to you about that because I know um, a lot of our clients have talked, has, have asked about it. And um, it's like one of those things, like some legislation gets made at some point, but then till it trickles down to the small business owner, there's a lot of um, speculation, rumors, and, and questions that, uh, that build up over time. So um, happy to have this conversation. So let's yeah, start well, out. Good, yeah. Let's start out with what is it? What is the Colorado Secured Savings Program exactly? Yeah, so the Colorado Secured Savings Program um, was actually signed into legislation in July of 2020. And what it is, is it's trying to create more access for the average Colorado worker to be able to participate in a retirement plan. So, you know, overall, it's generally a really good thing for the average Colorado worker, and it will allow each person to participate in an individual IRA. So an independent retirement account or individual retirement account um, that they can contribute part of their paycheck to go towards it. So that kind of, you know, big picture is what it is, but it is going to be run by the state and mandated by the state. Um, on how it goes into effect. Okay, so there's this balance overall, it's addressing a problem mm -hmm. that is a real problem that we need, yeah. that needs to be addressed, right? And then, but it is um, regulated by the state. So there's gonna be some tension there between um, what is presumed best or business owners always wanna have their own say so about things, right? right. Um, and so what does that mean for a small business owner? like? Um, even small business, I know the definition is very broad and yes. most small business owners in the eye of um, uh, the, the state is what some small business owners would consider a large business with like 50 employees or more, right? Mm -hmm. um, but so who is it, who does it affect initially? Right. So it's going to go into effect in 2021. Um, as of right now, it's going to be July of 2021 the legislature does have the option to change that and push it back for one year. Um, so as of right now, we haven't heard any different that it'll go into effect in 2021, but it will be for any employers in the state of Colorado who don't currently offer a retirement plan. So a 401k, a simple IRA, a SEP IRA, some sort of employer-based retirement plan. Um, and you have to have over hundred employees. So that's where it's going to start in 2021. Again, as of right now, it'll start in 2021 over 100 employees. So 100 employees plus with no current retirement program in place. You have then one year so to get into compliance. So you have until 2022 to get into compliance at the 100 plus level. So they are giving a little bit of leeway to get into compliance. And what it means for the employer as far as what they have to contribute the employer actually does not have to contribute anything, but they do have to make sure that all of their employees are auto enrolled into the program and it's going to start at 5%. So the individual employee will have the control to either increase that amount or not participate in it at all, but the, it, the onus is on the employer to auto enroll every employee that they have into the program. So that's where, you know, the, the fines and the regulations are going to come into play. The fines right now are $150 per employee, up to a maximum of $5,000 per year, if the employer isn't in compliance by the compliance date, which will be one year past um, the time that they have to start auto enrolling their employees. So what does that mean for, for business owners to auto enroll? Um, people like logistically speaking, is that a phone call? Is that a very cumbersome process? Like what do I have? <laughs> so it's 
So that's one part that we're not 100% sure on yet. Um, as we understand it, and as I understand it and looking through everything, is it's going to be the onus again is on the employer to work with their payroll company to do like an auto draft or a bank draft into the separate account. Because at the end of the day, it's the employee's account. The employee owns it. They can take it to whatever employer they want to go to. Um, there's nothing that restricts them employer-wise where to go. So the employee or employee-wise, the employer, on the other hand, the business owner will have to coordinate with their payroll company. And that's where um, I expect the added costs to come in because there's a fee that's going to be charged to be able to you know, put those different percentages into the other accounts, just like any payroll company charges now. Typically, you're going to have a maximum of either one to two direct deposit accounts. This is going to be similar to that, except it actually has to be a payroll deduction because it is going to come off the top of their income for the individual. Mm -hmm. So 2021, we're talking businesses, small businesses with 100 or more employees. Mm -hmm what happens after that? Yep. So it's a three-year phase in. So after 2021, then starting in, again, presumably July of 2022, any employers that have anywhere between 50 and 99 employees will then have to enroll. And same thing, automatic enrollment for every employee that's currently there and any new employee that comes on will have to be auto-enrolled into um, the Colorado Secure Savings Program. Mm -hmm. Then they have one year from compliance at that point to get into compliance. So they'll have to get into compliance by 2023. Then in July, again, presumably July of 2023, any Colorado or any employers that have five or more employees, pretty much five up to, 50, up to 49, will be required to auto-enroll. And so that'll start in 2023. Again, they have one year to get into compliance before those fines start being levied. So by 2024, any, any small business with five or more employees is gonna be enrolled in the program and, and yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they'll have to be enrolled in the program or have an exemption to the program, which again, that would be any type of um, current qualified retirement plan. Okay. What are, so other than having to set it up Obviously, it is, it is a win for the employees in the way that, you know, there is a structure in place where, the, where some saving is going to go into their right. saving, which is, which is good, their retirement savings. They can, they can adjust that number however they want to adjust it. Mm -hmm. um, what opportunities open up for business owners through that from your perspective? Yeah. So I think the business owners really have a unique position to put themselves in with this. Um, it doesn't make sense for every employer to offer some type of qualified retirement plan. Um, it might be cost prohibitive to them or just generally the amount of time that their employees spend. They're not there for very long. So it just doesn't, you know, logistically make sense. So now they have a recruiting opportunity to be able to bring in good employees and let them know that they're still going to be saving in some way, shape or form for their retirement, which is great. Um, my concern comes in with the fact that there's still not a lot of education around what does that actually mean for the individual's future cash flow? Are they going to have enough money in retirement? Are they going to be able to live the lifestyle that they're expecting? And with the, the Colorado Secure retire um, savings program, the maximum that someone can contribute a year is $6,000. Unless they're over 50, then they can contribute $7,000. So percentages are great, but that's your maximum that you can contribute. And even if you started this year, while it would be helpful, $6,000 a year isn't going to get you most likely to where you need to be in retirement when we factor in other things like health care. Um, and overall inflation. So the business owners really have the opportunity to come in and help educate their employees on their finances and really bring them a different level of financial education than just simply, we have a retirement plan, but what does that actually mean for you as the individual? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where businesses can start to set themselves apart in this time frame of saying, you know, hey, not only do we offer the Colorado Secure Retirement Savings Program, 
we also are providing some level of financial education. So you can really understand what that means for your future and you know, different things that you could potentially be doing and tweaking in addition to what they're already providing. So that's where I think the opportunity is those employers then breed that employee loyalty where their employees are going to stay with them even when times are tough. I mean, we don't know what the road ahead looks like. Um, I'm gonna venture to guess it's not gonna be perfect. <laughs> it's probably gonna have some bumps in the road, right? Um, and that's okay, they, to be, that's to be expected. So being able to have employees that are going to stay with you when times are tough, that's important. And that's employee loyalty versus just having employee retention. But now your bottom line's a little bit better because you're not having to train new people to come in and do a job where it takes, you know, productivity and return on investment for an individual two years typically is what it takes to have that return on investment for a new employee. Um, and that's just, I mean, again, that's a blanket average across every industry, but that's what it is. So yeah. that's where I think the employers really have the opportunity to present themselves in a place where they're going to have great people coming to them also. Yeah. So really speaking into, you know, the, the threat could be an employee is thinking, okay, I'm putting my money aside, whatever my, my allocation is, I don't need to worry about retirement. It's taken care of which as you're saying is probably not going to be sufficient. Um, and as a, as a business owner, I really have an opportunity to partner through education with my employees mm -hmm. for long-term success and really have them feel, um, provide that additional value benefit of, of the education and the planning to, for long-term uh, retirement strategy, essentially, um, yeah. which they wouldn't, because usually they wouldn't access that. I mean, the other thing is people know they should um, learn more about retirement planning, but they're not reaching out because it's, they don't know where to go. It's cumbersome, like all mm -hmm. these obstacles that are in the way. But now as a, as an employer, you can actually make it very accessible, very easy, very um, convenient for people to get the right education, right? Um, Absolutely. And that's, that's exactly it. And the nice part that comes with all of that is not only do you get employee loyalty, what's one of the easiest ways to get more business in the door is to have your employees bringing that into you. And if your employees are happy and they're confident with who you are as an employer and the things that you're providing them, because that financial education, I mean, that I offer it. There's a lot of other companies that offer it as well. And, but we're not offering it from our company. I'm like, this is yours, like take this and let's run with it and let's make this an employee benefit that you can offer. Because then those employees, they, they love their employers. They recruit good people, they stay, but they're also then your walking advertisement. When people are proud of where they work, they'll tell everyone about it. I mean, right, how many times have you been at a party or well, in the past, I should say, <laughs> at a party <laughs> and you know, they, that you meet someone and you talk to them about what they do and they love their employer and they're like, oh my gosh, this place is the best place to work. If you ever need, uh, you know, if you ever need plumbing done, this is call my company. They're the best of the best hands down versus you talk to someone who doesn't enjoy working for their company because just perceptionally wise, whether or not it's true, they don't feel that their employer cares about them. So typically the next words out of their mouth is, yeah, I work here. But I'm always open and, you know, always looking around. Like, yeah. No, yeah. they never said you're a bad company or anything like that. But to me, I'm like, oh, well, why would I, why would I look at that company if they can't even keep their employees? Yeah. You know, and that's not going to be the same for everyone. And you're always going to have, right, a couple of those disgruntled people. But in general, right, if you can utilize this as a way for marketing, for employee loyalty, I mean, you're going to increase your bottom line just based on that yeah i mean you know in this conversation um really what stands out to me is how you're looking at this really through the lens of the business owner and the business and i know that's one of the areas that you really specialize in you know there's there's financial advisors that have different areas of expertise but you really focus on working specifically with small business owners and small businesses and, and their um, employees. So what, um, 
what would that look like if, if I'm a business owner that, that you know, falls somewhere, I know it's within the next three years, this mm -hmm. is a conversation that I need to have. Um, I guess my question is how would I reach out to you? Would, would you come in and help me educate my team? Like, what does that look like if I say, hey, this is something that I'm interested in, I understand the benefit and the value of what you're providing, or I'd like to learn more about that. Um, how do I get started working with you? Or Absolutely. So what I do for any business owner and or business, right, that wants to have this conversation is our first meeting really, you know, you can reach out to me a number of ways, right? I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> I'm with Network in Action. So literally type in Sarah Caruso Denver and you'll find me um, and my cell phone number. But call me. But what I like to do is I like to set up an introductory meeting and really figure out, you know, where can I be of highest value to the business owner? Because if you already have a 401k plan set up, well, then this actually doesn't apply to you. The Colorado Secure Act doesn't apply to you. You don't have to worry about it. However, there's ways that we could potentially leverage it all together because most 401k plans are going to have a certain limit where they say, okay, you have to be here for six months before you can contribute or before you can participate you can actually also participate with the Colorado Secure Savings Act. So you can, you can do some really interesting things. Um, but that first meeting, I like to go through with those business owners and really just find out where can I be of highest value? Um, I look at it all from a revenue perspective and a cash flow perspective. Because I think at the end of the day, the businesses that I work with, I know one of the things that's always top of mind for them is cash flow. What is our cash flow equation? Are we going to have enough to make payroll? Are we going to have enough to do our expansion? Are we going to have enough to hire more people um, to take off the burden, the workload of, of what's going on currently? So I really look at it that from that perspective is where can we find ways to add cash flow back into the business? Um, and starting there. And then, you know, as we look at that and kind of determine what's going to make the most sense, because every business is a little different. If you're a service-based blue collar business, you know, you have men and women that are out in the field, they're very hard to get in touch with for a lunch and learn. So we need to strategize and do something different. Um, if you're a dual marketing company, you have a very specific way that the business is structured. So you can't really even talk about doing a qualified retirement plan or employee benefits that are very traditional. We have to think outside the box for that. Um, and so we usually have one meeting where, you know, I really determine, am I a good fit? For the company um, because there's honestly there's sometimes that i'm not a good fit for the company and that's okay but that's what we determine first does it make sense to even move forward then that second meeting is really figuring out if it makes sense to move forward what is the best way to do that is that financial education that's going to be based at your company lunch and learn on like well eventually a lunch and learn on location mm -hmm. <laughs> right um or is it something where I need to hop on a team call for 10 minutes in the morning to give a high level overview of what some of the benefits are and then reach out to everyone individually because that's just how the timing is going to work. There's people on call, there's people you know, not available. Um, and that's what we really do in the second meeting. And then by the third meeting is figuring out, is there some level of employee benefits that would be 401k, actual qualified retirement plan? based on the structure of the company, based on the cash flows that the company has, or maybe it makes sense to put that in place instead of going with the Colorado mm -hmm. retirement savings plan or program. Good. And and the time to have these conversations is really now, starting mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great. It's starting now because there, I mean, whether or not the legislature decides to push it one more year, it's coming. I mean, it's here. It's just whether or not it's this July or next July. I have seen no indication as of right now that they're going to move it to next July. The structures are in place. The, the fines to the employers are in place. How the employees actually are going to seek restitution against the companies are in place. Um, they can actually just sue the companies for it. But that is all included in there. So they're now just working out a couple of the little pieces actually with the payroll companies to ensure that the, the streamlineness is there. And most of these payroll companies are already set up to do that because they work with 401ks and simple IRAs and SEP IRAs already. Mm -hmm. This is an easy thing for the payroll company to transition into. So it's, I mean, it's here and having the conversation now, we can help prepare those businesses for what's to come 
and when to start the communication with their employees. Because if you start communicating to employees now and it does get pushed another year, well, that could be a problem. So I would definitely not do that yet. Mm -hmm. But these are the conversations that we have. If you've got a small business of five employees, well, again, does it make sense to do a qualified retirement plan? Maybe, maybe not. And we can have those conversations and really start to get in depth and help control that cash flow inside of the business. Great. Sarah, thank you so much. Like this was a very informative uh, conversation. I know there's a lot of business owners out there that um, have questions about it that are, if it was not on their radar, now it is on their radar. Yeah. And um, of course, we're going to put your contact information on this video as well. And I know they're going to reach out to you and um, get great help. Yes, absolutely. I'm just here to provide guidance. So and thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about this. Thank you. Thank you so much.